A multiple attacker threat is pretty common when we see defensive encounters. You better be ready for it. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I am your host as always, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Brazil. Mountain Man Medical has name brand proven trauma medical supplies with a price match guarantee to ensure you get the right gear at the right price. Check them out at get-asp.com slash mountain man. You see this man riding his motorcycle? That is actually an off-duty cop. <clears throat> You're going to see the guys that are going to kind of come in after him here are robbers and they're going to pin him in thinking that he's easy meat, but he is actually gonna get his gun out and go to work on these guys. Apparently they did have at least one gun among them as well. You see him get a hit on that guy who was kind of running off there and then put several shots on the guy riding the motorcycle. The news story that I've linked in the description says that he took seven shots and one of those shots uh, hit the guy who was down here now and another several of them hit the guy that was riding off on the moto there that went sideways and he didn't make it. Now we're gonna see our defender here. Now take his helmet off and now have to figure out what to do with this guy who has a bullet hole in him after all of his buddies have run off. And I'm just gonna let this play a little bit. He thinks about getting his phone out and calling in for help for a minute here. Switches the gun over to his left hand again so that he can get his balaclava off there and now figure out what he's gonna do with this guy who's thinking about getting himself up. And now our defender decides, no man, I want you to lay down there instead. And he's just gonna kinda hold him here and wait. Now, if you notice, one of the things is, is that our defender had his phone in his left pocket and he's left-handed, so he gives that guy a good slap across the face. The news story says that this guy was injured, the one that's that's on the ground right now, transported to the hospital, is gonna face charges. One other guy died, our defender wasn't hurt, and we're gonna think about lessons. Hey, we still have a few seats left at the ASP National Conference this year. Join us, there's a link in the description. It's all a fundraiser for the Flint Hills Foster Teen Camp and an incredible weekend of training. Boy, I can't say enough, carry your firearm on your person, make sure that you have it, make sure that you are ready, and especially if you're riding a motorcycle, you wanna think about drawing from the moto, from your place of concealment, from your car. Because if you think about this guy now, he is trapped in by these guys and what is he going to do to defend himself here? Because he doesn't have like the, the you know car to protect him, he doesn't have the door or any of those things. So knowing how to get your gun out quickly from the place that you conceal it is important. And of course the big thing with the moto is you gotta think about the balance of the motorcycle. Now, again, if these guys are pointing a gun at you, you might have a better opportunity to counter ambush later, but our guy decides here instead he is gonna get his gun out. And as he does, he kinda has to get into a weird position and that causes him to lose balance on the bike. So I would really strongly encourage you, you're gonna ride a motorcycle, just learn to draw from the position that you ride in. Maybe you know, pull it into a garage or something like that and just think about it, maybe practice some draws, because of course your riding equipment, your gloves that you use to ride, which I was, you know, I've ridden a motorcycle for many years and I'm an all the gear, all the time guy. And, and so, you know, knowing what that does to your draw, important. I do love that he got the gun out here. Now you gotta go to work with that gun and get hits. The first one to get an anatomically significant hit almost always wins. I do notice here that our defender has got his right arm, his support arm down on the ground and he's shooting from a very odd position here. So once your flat range skills are strong, once your square range standing two-handed skills are strong, you do want to work on some compromised weird shooting position drills. We're actually working a class on this for the Active Self-Protection National Conference this year. There are still some seats left. I'd really encourage you to come. So because again, learning how to maybe use your shoulder and put two hands on the gun and get good hits is important. And knowing how it feels to shoot from compromised positions is very good. Now it puts a hit on that guy. I don't mind that at all. And puts shots towards this guy because again, they were just all threatening him with a gun. Now you gotta learn when enough is enough eventually. And I think he does a good job of that here. Is, he, is that once that guy is kind of off and on the road and not really thinking about him anymore, he does stop and decides, okay, wait a minute. I'm not going to shoot anymore at this guy. And that was a good decision in this particular case. So now you gotta decide, how am I gonna hold this guy here? How am I gonna get him into like a position where I can keep him? Well, number one, as a private citizen, you don't necessarily have to do that. Something really to think about. Number two, I do think as a private citizen, one of the things that we wanna think about here is recognize that he is now trying to get all this gear off of him. And that might be something that you wanna do, but your big priority is to keep eyes on this guy unless you absolutely know he's not a threat 100%, which I'm not so sure he did know that in this particular case. I will also say you notice that our defender had to put a gun in his support hand. 
to get his phone out of his dominant side pocket. It's a good thing to maybe think about either wearing a smartwatch, something that you can dial emergency services, get some help without getting your phone out, or to keep your phone in your support side pocket so that you can keep your gun in your dominant hand in order to use it after a defensive encounter. These kind of staging questions I don't think are the end of the world and I don't think you know you have to kind of think through every bit of that, but it's worth thinking about and worth changing. Now, I also think here, okay, if he wants to hold this guy, I get that and you can do that and there's certainly nothing wrong with it, but it is risky and so I wouldn't always recommend that. Generally as a private citizen, I'd recommend break contact with this guy and call the cops and let them come and get him. I get it, this guy is an off-duty cop, so he might feel like he needs that, but you might be able as well to bug out, call in, get an on-duty guy to come and deal with this stuff and deal with it from there. That said, I think this guy did a great job, had his gun on him, was ready and willing to use it, repelled multiple armed carjackers and covered his ass.